morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for joining us for worship this morning as we celebrate the Feast of All Saints. And remember all of those who have gone before us to be, to be with Christ. We start our worship this morning with Nick 940. Holy God, we praise thy name. May God bless our worship this morning. Ourselves and the truth is not in us. But, but if we confess, confess our sins, 
Victory. 
into one holy communion, the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant us so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that, together with them, we may come to the unspeakable joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. from the Revelation to St. John, chapter 7. <coughs> then I saw another angel ascending from the rising of the sun, with the seal of the living God. And he called with a loud voice to the four angels who had been given power to harm earth and sea, saying, Do not harm the earth or the sea or the trees until we have sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads. And I heard the number of the seal, 144,000, sealed from every tribe of the sons of Israel. 12,000 from the tribe of Judah were sealed. 12,000 from the tribe of Reuben. 12,000 from the tribe of Gath. 12,000 from the tribe of Asher. 12,000 from the tribe of Naphtali. 12,000 from the tribe of Manasseh. 12,000 from the tribe of Simeon. 12,000 from the tribe of Levi, 12,000 from the tribe of Issachar, 12,000 from the tribe of Zebulun, 12,000 from the tribe of Joseph, 12,000 from the tribe of Benjamin were sealed. After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb forever. And all the angels were standing around the throne, and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory, and wisdom, and thanksgiving, and honor, and power, and might, be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these clothed in white robes, and from where have they come? I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God, and serve Him day and night in His temple. And He who sits on the throne will shelter them with His presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and He will guide them to springs of living water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Ah! This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The epistle is from 1 John chapter 3. <coughs> See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God. And so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will has not yet appeared, but we know that when He appears, we shall be like Him, because we shall see Him as He is. And everyone who thus hopes in Him purifies himself as He is pure. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to 
St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Seeing the crowds, Jesus went up on the mountain. And when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, as we remember those day, as we remember those today, those who have fallen asleep in Christ before us, as we mourn their loss and think upon them, as here in a little bit we hear their names read aloud and hear the bell tolled commemorating their passing on before us to heaven, we may be certain, absolutely certain, that these saints who have gone before us have received the blessed state which Jesus talks about in the Sermon on the Mount. Which Jesus says here in these Beatitudes. First and foremost, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. They are at Christ's side now. They no longer have to worry about being citizens of heaven while suffering through life here on earth. Their struggle is over. Yes, they still wait for the fullness of the kingdom of heaven when Christ comes again and recreates heaven and earth. But they have entered the kingdom of heaven even now. And of course, being at Christ's side, being away from the sorrows and sufferings and sin of this dying world, they are Comforted. Comforted with the eternal presence of Christ. Comforted as they await the eternal feast, which God describes in Isaiah 20, chapter 25, that feast where God will wipe away every tear, will feed us with the best food and drink, and will swallow up death forever. They are, in a way, we can only just now glimpse, fully comforted. Along with this comfort comes satisfaction. Those blessed saints who have gone to Christ's side before us, our loved ones, our relatives, our friends, those who have gone to Christ before us are satisfied in a way those living in this world seldom are. They have the righteousness of God eternally. They are in Christ's presence day and night. Again, as that scene in Isaiah chapter 25 describes given the best food, the best drink, this feast which the Lord provides, they are eternally and fully satisfied. And these saints who have gone before us receive mercy. The ultimate mercy of being spared from eternal death and mercy beyond this. Mercy to be with Christ forever. Mercy in having every tear wiped away. Mercy in seeing God face to face. These saints, having now left this sinful flesh, see God, see Him fully in all His righteousness and glory. See Him in a way, as warned in the Old Testament, Moses couldn't even see God because he would die because of how unrighteous Moses was and how righteous God was. But those saints who have gone before us see God even now and have received mercy and satisfaction. They have been comforted. And lastly, these saints who have gone to Christ ahead of us are indeed called sons of God. God has claimed them has named them as his own. In their baptisms, God called them and adopted them, adopted them into his family. And now they have the inheritance of the kingdom of God, of the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is theirs. We can take comfort in all of these things. 
But there's also one thing I want to clarify here when we're talking about the Beatitudes and all the blessings God gives them. Yes, they've received the kingdom of heaven. They will inherit the earth on the last day. They have been comforted and called sons of God, have been satisfied. But all of this was not because of anything they have done. It is a common misunderstanding that the Beatitudes show Christ giving the requirements for what must be done among his saints in order to receive all of these blessings. Yes, these Beatitudes describe us. They describe those saints in the church, both the church here on earth and the eternal church with all the saints who are now with Christ. But first and foremost, these Beatitudes don't give requirements, but describe Christ himself. These Beatitudes describe Christ himself. Christ and what he has done and what he has given to us, the church. So first and foremost, it was Jesus who was poor in spirit. He was poor in spirit, not using his divine power to take himself off the cross. When he was mocked, if you are the son of God, deliver yourself from this. But no, he emptied himself. Being poor in spirit, truly poor in spirit, relying fully upon God the Father, trusting in the Father to raise him up on the third day. It was Christ who mourned, mourned and wept over Jerusalem, who would not Jerusalem, who would not heed his call to repentance. But it was Jesus who mourned over this fallen world. But in being raised from the dead. And giving satisfaction for all our sins upon the cross. And reconciling us to the Father, Jesus was comforted. And the comforter. It was Christ who made himself weak. Meek. Taking on human flesh. Dying for us upon the cross. And then and in dying for us, relying solely upon God the Father to be raised again. And now it is Christ who truly inherits the earth. God the Father giving all authority and power and judgment over to his Son. It was Christ who truly hungered and thirsted for righteousness, but found none among his people. But he fulfilled the law himself, fulfilled all righteousness for our sake. It was Christ who was first merciful, merciful to us in dying on the cross for us and taking the punishment which our sins deserve upon himself. It was Christ who truly was pure in heart, not going after other false gods, not diverting from the path God the Father had given him, but going faithfully to the cross, an obedient child, pure in heart and mind. And so it is also Jesus who truly sees God the Father. It was Jesus who was first and foremost the peacemaker. Not coming into this world in order to condemn the world, but in order to save it. Coming as an obedient son, listening to God and following him the entire way. Being raised and being proclaimed to be the son of God, taking his rightful place at the right hand of the Father. Not coming with warfare, but with a word of peace. It is Christ who was persecuted. Persecuted for righteousness' sake. That is, he was persecuted in order to fulfill all righteousness. In order to fulfill our righteousness. Suffering the ultimate persecution, death on the cross. But in suffering this ultimate persecution, he also fulfilled all righteousness. Brought in God's reign, that is, he brought forth the kingdom of heaven here to his saints on earth. And what does it mean that he brought forth the kingdom of heaven? It means that he brought salvation to us, to us in this very room. He brought God to us, that we might live in God's salvation here and now and eternally when Christ comes again. Like I 
said the Beatitudes first and foremost describe Christ. But then secondly, and because of Christ, they also now apply to us who live under Christ. Not because of what we have done, but because of what Christ first did in fulfilling all righteousness by living perfectly for us, by dying for us upon the cross, by being raised again. All of these things in the Beatitudes aren't requirements, but now describe the blessings that Christians have on account of Christ. We are poor in spirit. That is, our spirit does not puff itself up. We don't rely upon our own actions, our own deeds, but we empty ourselves, our poor in spirit, relying fully upon Christ to save us from death and from our sin. Relying solely upon God's grace for our salvation. We mourn. We don't look at this world and see sunshine and roses all the time. This world is full of suffering and death. And so, as Christians, we do mourn. Mourn the loss of God's righteousness. Mourn death and suffering here on earth. But, in our sorrow, in our mourning, we acknowledge the fact that we can do nothing but die if left to our own devices. And so we turn away from death, turn away from ourselves, and look firmly towards God for our salvation. Look firmly towards God to comfort us in our morning. And this is what he does. Giving us eternal life instead of death. We are meek in the same way that we are poor in spirit. We, in our own baptism, in your baptism, have been raised solely upon Christ's power. If it was up to you, if it was up to your own merit, your own works, you'd still be left with nothing but death. So you are me. You acknowledge this. And instead turn fully to Christ and what he gives you. Christ and his power. Really, it is only a meek person who can do what the Beatitude says here and inherit only a meek person can inherit, because inheritance requires nothing on your part. Inheritance, what does it require? It requires the death of somebody and a free gift on account of that death being given to you. That's exactly what happens in Christ's death. He dies so that we inherit. We hunger and thirst for righteousness, that is, we know according to the natural law, according to God's law, that we need righteousness. We need reprieve from sin in this world. And of course, we cannot find it in this world or in ourselves. Rather, we find it in Christ. We are satisfied in Christ. We are satisfied when he feeds us his very body and blood here on this altar. Those who hunger and thirst for righteousness are satisfied here and now in the Lord's Supper because of Christ's death and resurrection. We are now peacemakers. Meaning, we as Christians don't have a message of warfare. We have a message of peace. Christ has brought us peace with God. That is what the gospel is, eternal peace with God. And now we bring this to the world, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news of peace with God. And we know we have this peace because we have been called sons of God. Like I said in your baptism, this is a very important thing for us saints in this world. In your baptism, your sinful flesh has been washed away and you are made a son of God. Given God's own triune name upon your hearts. What greater image of peace is there than this? 
that those who once deserved only wrath and damnation, those who were at war with God in every sense of the word, have now been adopted as God's own children. That really is peace. And we, of course, are persecuted for righteousness' sake, held in derision, mocked for our beliefs, but this does not matter because we know that we have received the kingdom of God. We have received salvation from Christ. We have peace with God and the inheritance of eternal life which comes with it. Those saints who have gone before us, us saints now, and those saints who will come after us, all have received these blessed statements from Christ. These beatitudes. We've received it all from Christ. May we always remember and give thanks to God for this, putting our sinful flesh aside and relying on the kingdom of heaven which Christ brings to us. Now may the peace of God which passes all understanding guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Please rise as we continue.